One of these men just graduated from the United States Naval Academy. What is your name, please? My name is Lieutenant Douglas S. Morgan, United States Air Force. What is your name, please? My name is Lieutenant Douglas S. Morgan, United States Marine Corps. What is your name, please? My name is Lieutenant Douglas S. Morgan, United States Army. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Lieutenant Douglas S. Morgan and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of Suave, hairdressing and conditioner, and America's number one hairspray, Helene Curtis Spray Net. And now may I introduce our panel. First, Mr. Tom Poston. <laughs> Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> then, Mr. Don Amici. And finally, Miss Polly Bergen. <laughs> so that you good people are not outside of an inside joke, the reason they were laughing is we're in a different theater tonight, a new theater, and everything is reversed. So we're going in the opposite order, and everybody wasn't quite aware of it at the order in which they had it. Would you, uh, panel, please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it. I, Lieutenant Douglas S. Morgan, am not a Navy officer, although I did graduate from the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis in the class of 1960. I am now on a month's leave before reporting to my first assignment. I am starting two important new careers. My career as an officer is just eight days old. I was commissioned last Wednesday. My career as a husband is just five days old. I was married last Saturday. Signed, Douglas S. Morgan, Second Lieutenant. Panel, as you heard, these three gentlemen all claim to be Lieutenant Douglas S. Morgan, Annapolis graduate. And let's begin this first round of questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Now, am I correct? Number one is Air Force. Uh, number two is Marine. Yes, ma'am. And number three is Army. That's right. And you graduated from a naval <laughs> institution. Isn't that nice? <laughs> um, could you tell me, number one, how as an... Uh, as, as since you are in the Air Force, you graduated from a Naval Academy? That's correct. Well, wh uh, how? Why? How? I mean, do they? They do. Yes, oh, they do? do. Yes, ma'am. Oh, they let anyone in there. You don't just have to be Navy. Well, no, you see, you go through it being in the Navy, and then you have a choice about, oh, three months before graduation to make your choice of any branch of the Armed Forces. Don Amici. Uh, number two, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the name of the hotel uh, on the campus, or just off the campus at Annapolis, that they use for visitors? The Municipal. Number three, would you agree with that? Carville Hall. Uh, number uh, one, what was uh, uh, the hero of last year's football game with, uh, with Army? Belanche. Joe, oh. you mean, uh, uh, I'm wondering whether you mean uh, Trigger Joe or Trancini? Quarterback Trancini, or? No, I meant, uh, I meant... Bellano. I see what you mean, Joe Bellano. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, number, uh, number two, what is the name of the church right alongside, or just, just adjacent to Cardwell Hall? It's called the chapel. Mm. No. Kitty Carlisle. Number one, who gave the uh, graduating address at Annapolis? Admiral Farragut. Number two, who gave the graduating address? Arlie Burke. Who? Arlie Burke. Who gave the graduating address, number three? Uh, Henry Cabot Lodge. Number one, what did your wife wear on her head? She wore... Can't say. <laughs> number two, what did your wife wear on her head? Right now, she's wearing a pink... Not right now, it's your wedding. It's your wedding. She wore a simple white tiara with a uh, half veil. A veil. Number three, what did your wife wear on her head? No, no, no crown at all? No. Because I saw some beautiful pictures of the weddings there. Tom Poston. 
Uh, number three, what is uh, the ceiling on a ship called? The overhead. Uh, thank you. Number two, which side, uh, when you got married, which side does the bridegroom stand on? The bridegroom stands on the right. Thank you. Number one, did you get a commission certificate? No, I did not, sir. We were sworn in just after graduation. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, did you pass in a, in a review before your, uh, the, the person who swore you in, or was What we did was graduate first, then as a body, there were 83 of us that uh, were commissioned. Either. I guess that's it, panel. It's time to vote. Without consultation, will you kindly now mark your ballot? And as you do so, select number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody voted? Yep. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, bud, because uh, I, I thought I liked the answers that he gave, and he answered Cardwell Hall. I'm not sure about that, but it seemed to satisfy Don. I suppose I shouldn't go by that, but I did. And. Uh, I'm really a little confused. I almost voted for Don because usually we're on that side. <laughs> but I... <laughs> Forgive me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Kitty, which one did you select? I voted for number three. Um, uh, it's got to be number three. And every time I say it's got to be somebody, it never is. But he's the only one that said that uh, Henry Cabot Lodge gave the graduating address. And I know that's true. Don, which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number three because of the uh, reasons that Tom pointed out. The <laughs> cardboard hall, which is the correct answer as nearly as I can remember, having stayed there once. And Polly, your vote. I voted for number three. Uh, mainly because, I, I don't know, when I got married, my husband stood on my left, which may be illegal, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll check into it later, <laughs> but uh, number two said right, and then number three said, and, and number one said, and it's all sort of, you know, there you are. All right. <laughs> With the votes in and our minds all made up, let's discover now which one of these three young gentlemen is the brand new officer, graduate of Annapolis, and we think uh, probably the best person qualified, best qualified to select the right one would be his commanding officer. So uh, we have asked his bride of five days, Mrs. Louise Morgan, to come down and select her husband. Well, we thank you both very much. Not only wish you great success in your chosen career, sir, but you, young lady, a lifetime of happiness with all of God's blessings. Thank you for being with us tonight. <laughs> now, let's find out about the others. Number one, if you tell us your real name and what you really do, please. Yes, sir. I'm Jack Jobes. I'm a summertime social director at Shelfont Haddon Hall in Atlantic City. Thank you, sir. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, I think you came a cropper with Admiral Farragut. <laughs> not too sure. Number two, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Bill Frank, and I work for a heating, ventilating, and air conditioning company in Newark. Thank you. <laughs> a pleasure having you with us. Checking the score, we find the panel started off in our new digs tonight, 100%. They knocked them all off, so from Helene Curtis, there will be $150, gentlemen, for you to divide amongst you. And, of course, uh, a gift package of King's Men toiletries for each of you. Hope you enjoyed your visit. We did. Good night, good luck, and God bless you. <laughs> and now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Anne Easton. What is your name, please? My name is Anne Easton. What is your name, please? My name is Anne Easton. Panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Anne Easton, am a college student. Like many other students, I have a summer job. My job is a bit more unusual than most. I work at the Steel Pier in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Four times each day, I dive from a 40-foot tower into an 11-foot tank. On horseback. Signed, Anne Eastham. 
Panel, you heard these three girls all claiming to be a horseback diver into a tank and east them. Let's start this cross-examination with Tom Post. Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, could you tell, what is a hackamore? A hackamore? Oh, what? I think you're referring to, uh, I'm not sure of. A buggy. Uh, a bunny? Buggy, I'm not mm. sure. A buggy. It's uh, a horsey term. Yes. <laughs> and so am I. Uh, number three, what is a syllabus? I ask you as a college girl. It's you know? an outline for a course. Where did you go to school? Florida State University. Thank you. How, how, what time of year did you start, number three, diving into uh, the Atlantic Ocean? Uh, the first of the summer. Kitty Carla. Well, I'm just thrilled to meet one of you girls who does this, because I've seen the act, and it's fantastic. You always wanted to do it. No. <laughs> what happens, number one, how do you get out of the tank? I swim out, and... Well, how, how, where does the horse go? There's a ramp that we both... He walks he never up, kicks and I you. walk out. He never kicks you. Well, sometimes there's a danger if I fall off under the water. Or yeah. Number two, is there a blindfold that the horse wears? <laughs> no. Number three, how long, is there a blindfold that the horse wears? No. How long is the steel pier, number three? A half a mile out to sea. A half a mile from where, where you, where you started? From the board. Uh -huh. Number two, one, what do you wear when you do this? A bathing suit, two uh, bathing caps, and a crash helmet. No. Donna Michi, number one, do you go into the water with the horse? Yes. Number two, you also, mm -hmm. you go into the water with the horse? Oh, yes. You also, number three? Yes. Uh, number uh, two, how do you get this horse to jump? It's trained to jump. He pushes. And he, he, he jumps? <laughs> no, we don't push him. He, he goes off of his own accord? Yes. Steps off? That's right. Uh, number three, you always use the same horse? No. How often do you change horses, number one? Well, we usually use one horse for a day and then possibly, there are three horses that we use, but yes. one for one day. Polly? And then when they discover one of the horses can't swim, of course, they have to change off uh, I'm not worried about the horse being blindfolded, but don't one of you wear one when you jump? I mean, I, you literally sit on the horse and land in the tank still on the horse. What Is number? that correct, number one? Yes. And, and stay on the horse, and then you both exit together. I mean, get I, out of the tank together. I get off. After we've surfaced. Oh, you get off in the, and then come, I see. Number two, what college do you go to? Palomar College. Where is that? San Marcos, California. Number one. Fred, that's it. Time once again to vote. Cast our ballots. And without consultation, as always. So will you please do so. Mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked, panel? Nope. Okay, Tom, whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three this time, but I, I tell you, I think she would have answered the questions I didn't get a chance to ask better than the other two. <laughs> Good reason. All right, Kitty, your selection. Well, I voted for number one. I didn't know whether Hackamore was a bunny or a buggy either. <laughs> and uh, she, I've seen the act, and she does wear a crash helmet. I know that. And I believed it was number one. Okay. Don, which is your vote? Well, I voted for number three also. And uh, essentially, I hate to be repetitious, but essentially my, uh, my reasonings for doing that were the same as Tom's. Again, yes, that's right. all the questions <laughs> I was going to ask. I'm sure she would have answered properly. Polly, which one do you think is the real one? Well, I thought it was number three, but I voted for number two because it was number three last time. I see. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> So there we have it now, the way we voted and the reasons we voted the way we did. Let's discover now which one of these young ladies is the intrepid miss who does the diving on horseback. So will the real Anne Eastham please stand up. Tom has a question. What is it, Tom? Are we going to see it now? 
No, the horse was not afraid of diving. He was afraid of this theater. But oh, no, afraid of... We had no way out. Yes, sir. I've got a question to ask. Do you really go into the water with this horse? Oh, he must be a well-trained animal. They are. Because yeah, very... you, uh, ordinarily, you cannot possibly go into the water well, with a horse. Well, they do, and I've you... seen it. Let's find out about the other side. I'm Orange. Tell us your real name and what you really do, please. My name is Sandra Mulch, and I'm a buyer for Town & Country in oh. Milwaukee. Thank you. Same information about you, your real name and what you do. My name is Jill Thompson. I'm a guide for Freedom Land, the world's largest entertainment center, which opens next Sunday. <laughs> well, we thank you very much, ladies. And you find I'm looking. There were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Helene Curtis. Not a bad amount, along with the pleasure that I trust you've had. And, of course, the gift box of King's Men Toiletries for your men. Thank you very much for being with us. Good luck to you, young lady. Good night. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Sam McDowell. What is your name, please? My name is Sam McDowell. What is your name, please? My name is Sam McDowell. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Sam McDowell, have been playing baseball since I was eight years old. I am a pitcher. So far in my career, I have had 85 wins and six losses. I have pitched 40 no-hit games. In the Colt League World Series last year, I pitched three games, two one-hitters and one no-hitter. Since my graduation from high school two weeks ago, I have had offers from 14 of the 16 major league teams. Signed, Sam McDowell. Three young new high school graduates this time, panel, each one claiming to be Sam McDowell, baseball pitcher, I think you'll agree, extraordinary. And we'll start this round of questioning with Don Amici. Huh? Uh, number two, what happens if uh, a batter's bat tips the catcher's mitt? Uh, the uh, batter goes to first base with uh, interference. Uh, okay. Number three, what is the distance between bases? 90 feet. Mm. Number two, uh, number one, what is the distance between the uh, pitcher's mound and the, uh, and the home plate? 60 feet, 6 inches. Uh, number three, mm. what was the name of the uh, only pitcher to pitch a uh, no-hit game mm. in the World Series? Don uh, Lanson, uh, I think. Number one? Don Lawson. Uh, number two, what is the difference between a uh, no-hitter and a perfect no-hitter? Uh, a no-hitter uh, just means what it says, that uh, no hits have been given, but a perfect game... Uh, Nobody reaches first base. Uh, mm. Polly? Uh, number three, do you pitch with your glasses on? No, ma'am. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you wear them, then? Just, I'm just wearing them. Tonight. You're just wearing them tonight yes, for a disguise. <laughs> is that correct, sir? Yes. This is a fraudulent game. Is that correct, sir? <laughs> Would you re remove You're your glasses? You're starting a whole new show here, Polly. Would you take off your glasses, you please? I think I'm... Where is Kitty Carlisle? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, uh, in a um, uh, in the in the Colt the Colt League, is that uh, uh, like a high school? League, uh, league for high school players, or what exactly is it? I'm sorry, but I don't know. It's, Number two. Uh, it's of the high school level. It's uh, 15 and 16 year old boys. I see. Tom Poston. Thank you, Bud. Uh, let me see. Number uh, three. I'll try you. What does rubbing up a ball mean? Uh, taking your hand and uh, rubbing up at the ball and smoothing it out so you get a better grip on the ball. Number two. Do you agree with that fully? Well, to get whatever is on it, like dirt or something, might be on it. How about you, number one? Do you go along with those answers? That's to get a better feel of the ball before you pitch it. What, uh, who, who, who formally rubs up a ball? Number two, please. Who rubs up a ball? Uh, pitchers mostly and umpires do when they go to throw out a ball. And uh, number one, you uh, seem to know what I'm talking about. Before the game, they put special mud on the ball. Where do they get this mud, number one? 
I don't know the name. Kitty Carlisle. I don't you mean, know I don't mean they get the mud from you, understand? Do you know? Do you know? You don't know. I couldn't do the name. Number three, are you myopic? Ma'am? Are you myopic? <laughs> no, he's his opic. He plays, he plays in the coat league. He's myopic. How, how, what is your degree of myopia? He doesn't know. All right. Uh, number two, I, I'm very interested in hearing... I don't hear you. know what he's got. He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> how do you pitch a curveball? Number two. I just grip the seams in the right place and... Throw it. <laughs> Number one, how do you pitch a curveball? You will have your index finger and your middle finger and the thumb and you break your wrist outwards. I guess that's it. All you baseball fans, it's time to vote. So take your baseball scorecards and mark the game up there and vote for the right one if you can. Marking for number one, number two, or number three. Everyone voted? It went too early this time. Tom, whom did you vote this round? Well, I, I sort of went against my own question, I guess, in a way. The only one who knew formally what rubbing up a ball meant was number one. But uh, up until then, I had been convinced that it was number two, so I sort of switched eight ways and came out with number two again. Okay. Kitty? Well, I voted for number one. He knew about that, which seemed to be good. And then, uh, what I don't know about baseball could go into his degree of myopia, because I don't <laughs> believe he's myopic. But he did correct him when Don asked him a question about who played in some kind of league. And, and number three said a kind of muffled thing, and number one said it more clearly. And I think it's number one. Don, what about your vote? Well, I voted for number one. I, uh... I don't know, number two did a wonderful job of answering yeah. all the questions, but number one on the last few questions that Tom answered seemed to be a little bit more positive, my estimation. <laughs> and Polly. Polly's hiding her vote. I voted for number one, <laughs> because number three <laughs> didn't know Larson's name. Number one did. Number two, as, as the other said, uh, knew an awful lot about it, but he, uh, he simplified a couple of answers a little more than, than I wanted to hear, and number one was a little more broad with his... Okay, there we have it. Let's play ball and find out which one of these three gentlemen is the real brand new young pitcher extraordinary. So will the real Sam McDowell please stand up? Now for the, uh... What league does number one pitch for? Well, just for the... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Number three pitches for the myopic league. I don't know <laughs> what about the first one. But as we told you, the past two weeks, Sam McDowell has been in negotiation with 14 of the 16 major league clubs. And two nights ago, he signed a contract with one of them, and he's promised to make the first revelation of with whom he signed to us tonight. So, Sam, will you tell us with what team you signed? One of the, uh... American baseball teams, the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians. Well, you picked a good one. You're in first place. Good luck to you, Sam. That's the very Now, number one, if you tell us your real name and what you really do, please. My name is Edward Titus, and I'm the assistant chief of service at the Radio City Music Hall. Thank you. <laughs> and number three, if you tell us your real name and what you do, please. I'm Don Dixon, and I'm doing summer mission work with the Manhattan Baptist Church here in New York. Bless your heart. <laughs> well, in checking the score, we find that there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a nice large total of $750 from Helene Curtis and a set of King's Men toiletries, of course, for you. Thank you very much, fellas, and good luck to you, young man. Bye. Well, panel, my warmest hopia is to meet you all in myopia. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. Is saying good night from Helene Curtis and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is Mark Goodson, Bill Cochran production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Carlisle's hairstyle by John Bernard. This 
this show has been brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of suave hairdressing and conditioner, and America's number one hairspray, Helene Curtis Spray Net. Now, this is Byrne Bennett saying good night from To Tell the Truth.